All right, welcome back to lesson three. Now we are going to start looking at another piece of syntax and something that's very, very useful throughout Python and most other programming languages, which are for loops. Now, one of the biggest powers of programming are the looping capabilities they have, because whilst this example is a bit, of con bit contrived, variations on it are experienced by programmers every day. So let's say I have a collection like a string. Remember, I said that strings are collections of characters. So let's say lead is equal to lead. Now, if I was to look at, say, the first index, because it's a collection, so we can index it, that's L. If I was to look at the second index, that's E. Now, suppose I wanted to print all of these one by one. In an interactive terminal, it's easy. I just type it out and then hit enter. But if you're in a script or you're in a Jupyter notebook, you need to do a bit more than that. You need to print each one individually like so. And you notice that you're only actually changing the index each time. You're not doing anything else. So you're writing out exactly the same piece of code four times and having to execute it four times. And suppose the uh, string wasn't called lead. Suppose it was some other word. And the variable was in fact just word. This method would never just print out everything if it was a longer word. Or if it was a shorter word, you would get an error because it would try and print something that didn't exist. Like the fifth element doesn't exist, index error. So what do we do? Well, we can do a for loop. Now for loops are very simple. They are just ways of iterating over a collection and then performing each bit of code that we put in the for loop once for each iteration. We build them with the following syntax. We say for item, and now item can be a variable of any kind of any name. So in this case, I've called it item, but you could define it as anything. It could be I, it could be J, it could be X, it could be Y. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have defined it before the for loop. So you say for variable in, and then you put a collection of some kind. Let's use our word lead for now. And now I've ended that statement with a colon and started a new line. This is the first of the instances of Python's white space that you might have heard about already. In Python, white space is used to denote locations of, well, functions and uh, for loops, while loops, if statements, so on and so forth. What this means is that when you write a for loop, everything inside the for loop is indented by four spaces or one tap. So for item in lead, I can say print item. What this is going to do is it's going to iterate through every object in lead. Each object will be assigned to the variable item in turn. And each time they are, this line of code will be executed with item taking on the value of the uh, element in lead. Then we can have a new line. We can print done at the end. Because the indentation is over, this stuff will be executed once the for loop is complete. If we were to put in some other action in here, that would be included in the for loop. So we could say x equals zero, but that wouldn't do anything to just assign it several times. So if we execute this, you can see that each element of lead is being printed out one by one, and then we're exiting the for loop and printing done at the end. And honestly, that's it. That's all that there is to for loops. They're very simple, but there's a lot of power there. There's a lot of things you can do with it may, may not be immediately obvious. So for example, we could add some other items in there. We could have a counter. We could initialize that as zero and then run exactly the same code again, except this time, 
we make use of the fact that we can assign things like so, counter plus one. So this means every time this piece of code is executed, counter will increment by one. And thus we have a way of counting how many times a loop has been executed. Now there are better ways of doing this in Python than using counter, but this is a concept that's universal across programming languages. And there are many that require you to do things like this in order to get this information out. Now, I have said so far that we say for thing in collection. Now, how do you make collections? Because you can't just use strings all the time. Well, one of those is lists, which we're talking about next lesson. But another way is through the range object. So ranges are very, very useful in Python. If you create a range, all you need to do is provide a number and it will create a range object. Now, obviously that doesn't really return anything, or at least not visibly so, but we can use it with a for loop. So we can say something like for i in range 10, print i. And you can see that i is assigning, uh, well, is being assigned the values of zero through to nine. Ranges like indexing in that regard, in that it starts from the first element, zero, and goes up to the last element, 10, but exclusive of 10, so zero to nine, and thus you get 10 elements. So if I say for i in range 10, that means that I'm going to iterate over the code that I put in the loop 10 times. As you can imagine, this is very useful. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about len. Len is a length calculating function. In Python, if you want to know the length of a string or the length of a collection, generally, len usually works and will tell you how many things there are in something. And you can use this. You can do things like 4j in range len led. So what we're doing here is calculating how long it is and then iterating over it that many times and then print out led j with the index and we get exactly the same thing. Obviously this example is a bit contrived. It would be better and easier to use range as I've shown you before or just iterate over the lead collection itself. However, sometimes you may want to do something like this and it is worth remembering that for loops give you the flexibility to do just that. Okay, have a go at the exercises and see how you do.